What's up you guys, so I'm here with a new video today and I'm here to give you guys my uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Day uh, little mini tournament report slash deck profile. Uh, I ended up getting top 4 in the thing yesterday. Uh, people didn't know, I haven't played I haven't played real Yu-Gi-Oh! in uh, months and months and months. I didn't even plan on playing yet, but uh, things were falling in place. I wanted to try and give the game another, another uh, go. Um, I entered a Locals last weekend. It was the first time I had played in months. Uh, I topped it. It really didn't mean anything it was just kind of a practice session to get back into it and i could pretty much considered Yu-Gi-Oh day to be another one of those because it's not a real event or anything but it was cool to do well uh i ended up getting the token ending in top four um ended up losing uh in top four in time uh, i went to time pretty much the majority of the time that i've been playing since i gotten back i used to never go into time and now we went into time but um, it was cool. I was really glad. Um, a shout out to my boy uh, Nima, aka the Great Hat. He made me play. He demanded I play. He like forced me to play. I said just do it. So I said okay. I did it and ended up getting the token, which is awesome. I think the token looks awesome. It's Merrick. Really like Merrick. So really cool. Um, people want to know what I played. Don't get mad at me, guys. I played Light Sworn. It's all I had access to, Any the only deck I kind of knew. I also played it for multiple reasons. I played it because back in the day when Lightsworn were the best deck, I played that deck. I had the three charge, I had the Judgment Dragons, I had everything. A shout out to my boy Wilson Sang, aka 3Z Inferno. You probably won't say this video, but you do remember when I first met you, you sold me the whole Lightsworn deck for cheap. I never forgot that. That's what got me to really love the deck and got me, you know, to, to play the deck. So it was kind of homage to that and just to the fact that I had played it back in the day that I wanted to play it again. I wanted to give it a run around. The new cards made the deck really good and everyone said as soon as the new uh, draw five rule going first came through, Lightshorn wouldn't be any good. Um, that you they were too reliant on you know that extra card and I didn't believe that I felt that if you could still you know get your mills going you'd be good. Uh, I also played it because my belief was that Unlike other Lightsworn players, I knew ways to play without JD, without all the beaters. There are times that your mills are going to suck. They're going to suck. You're gambling with the deck. You're going to mill away your JDs. You're not going to hit Wyverns. You're not going to hit Dragon Rollers. And you're going to have to play an XYZ Synchro game that if you have the right cards in your extra deck, I believe you can get out of probably some of the most impossible situations in the game. And that's another reason I played it, and that's why I was very picky on my extra deck choices, which I'll explain when I get to that. But I'll show you guys my list. It's extremely standard, super, super standard, but I think the ratios were absolutely perfect. I was very happy with it. It performed well all day. Uh, I'll go over my rounds real quick. Round one, I played light, the Lights Horn Mirror. I won that. 2-1. Uh, round 2, I played Sam's. I beat that 2-0. Round 3 was Mermel. I beat that 2-0. Round 4 was Hat, uh, and the best player there, uh, Peter, shout out to you, bro. Um, he 2-0'd me, like, so beastly with Hat. I've never played against Hat before, and I bricked, and I just really couldn't play Yu-Gi-Oh. I had to set a Necro Gardener going first, because my 5 cards were 2 JDs, um, Wolf, Soul Charge, and Necro Garden. It was like, I'm pretty sure I lost. As soon as he set 3 or 4, it was over. I already knew I lost. Um, then round five, I played, uh, my friend Matt played Lightshorn, uh, won that, um, and then round six, uh, I played against Water again, really good Water player, Jesus, I hope I said your name right, bro, uh, he 2 owed me, I bricked again, like, flat out bricked, the problem with the deck, you brick, you lose, like, really fast, uh, and he was playing a very slow tempo Mermel game, which I really enjoyed, actually watching, because it was really cool, because some Mermel players go ham with the deck, he did go ham with it, but in a very controlled pace, and I really enjoyed that matchup, so shout out to him, he also made top. And then I squeezed in the 8th place, don't ask me how, I squeezed in the 8th place and got the token and that was awesome. And then in, in top 8 I had to play Peter again for Hat and I was able to return the favor and unfortunately I 2 owed him. Uh, my mills were perfect, my setups were perfect. I was just very fortunate. Um, uh, very critical uh, malevolent catastrophe won me the game. Uh, in that matchup, but shout out to him. He was easily the best player there. He had gone undefeated in Swiss, and uh, I just want to thank him for really, really good matches. And the first match, I just felt terrible not being able to really give him a real match, but being able to, you know, have the chance to play him again and actually be able to play Yu-Gi-Oh was cool. And then in the top four, I lost uh, to Car Curry's. Uh, boy was using Car Curry's synchro like Desmond Johnson's deck, and it was absolutely insane. He opened the nut field with like Felgrand and uh, Felgrands and. Um, the Car Curry guys, and it was just, you know, there's really no coming back from that, especially when you, you know, your mills don't start going. Uh, he got me game one with that, and then game two, I got him. He soul released me, and I lost 
all like lights horn names and then through the proper xyz's i actually got four names back in the graveyard so that's what i mean when i say the deck can play other games and i was able to win that and then we were in time and unfortunately i just could not win in time i had to gamble with it and it just it didn't work out but i want to give him a big shout out because he played the most innovative deck in an amazing meta call that day so that was a whole little tourney roundup it's you know it's not the best thing it's not a real i guess accomplishment but it was just kind of fun to play and to you know do well again so sorry this took this little intro took so long but i'll get to the list it's extremely standard i'll even have a dn screenshot down below if you guys just want to fast forward to that um so really standard uh, three jd card self-explanatory only two diablos three is too clumpy and only three dragon rulers uh blaster tempest and redox uh title doesn't do anything you're not really using it for their attack you're using it to banish the eclipse wyverns and to get uh the jds and the diabloses on board uh the reason why tempest is better because you do play draco sack you do play uh levy air it comes up a lot more redox is great because of the maxis you side in and because of um the Diamond Dire Wolf that I play, and of course Blaster is because it's a beater. And worst case scenario, you can bring up a Redox to stall for a turn, so good cards. Uh, so those are it for like the big beaters and dragons. For the rest of the engine of the deck, I decided to run three Curry Bandit. I know people cut this card to two. Some people didn't even run this, I don't know why. Uh, I firmly believe this is one of the best cards in the deck. You want to see it in your opening hand, even if you're drawing five. It at least can give you the opportunity to get another card in your hand. It sets up your graveyard. Uh, I side one out, of course, like every get game two and three, but uh, for game one, I really want to have it because it's, uh, it's just really critical. You you need to get your mills going, and that's how the deck works. You gotta get your mills going. It's like dragons are. Um, run the three Eclipse Wyvern, self-explanatory. Cards crazy. And I run three Necro Gardner. I don't own Rainbow Karibos. Never tested with Rainbow Karibo. I actually got Rainbow Karibo in the mirror match, and it was pretty crucial until it fell off. But I think Necro Gardner was better. I'm glad I played Necro Gardner and didn't invest in Rainbow Karibos. I still think it's better, just for some scenarios, especially when you can levy it back X Y Z with it and get it back in the graveyard. So really, really cool. And what I like about it is that I feel Necro Gardner is like really cool because they attack into it. That's one attack. Attack again. It can usually take two hits by itself, so it's a good card. Uh, on a Light Sword Engine, very standard. The three Lumina, best card. Two Lila, standard. Card wasn't that good, actually. Uh, the best Light Sword, though, hands down, was Raiden. Raiden was insane. Card just literally was beast. It, um... It gave me the ability to make so many ranks, uh, so many uh, seven, so many four, uh, so many rank fours, and uh, level eight synchros. That it was just, it was just MVP all day. Being able to mill four is also great. These two together are fantastic. They make the best card in my extra deck, uh, which I'll explain when I get to it. Um, they're just fantastic. Uh, then the one I was, I played one Minerva. Uh, I, it's funny. I don't play Goyo because I don't have one. I don't play. Leo, I don't play Star Eater, I don't play Decisive Arms because I don't have one, I don't play any of those cards. I still play Minerva though because it's a name and I absolutely love its effect, the fact that if you mill it, uh, you're able to mill another card. If you hit it with Solar Recharge, you mill another card. It's an, it, it just it's fantastic and it's a tuner. I would not cut this card from the deck. I love this card. One is perfect. Really good card. I, I enjoy playing that card a lot. Uh, one Wolf. Card sucks to draw, but if you have it with Recharge, it's fine. If you mill it off, it helps for easy rank 4 plays. And it can just buy you some time, too. When like you're up against a bad field, you just special it in defense, and it just gives you more, more you know, a little more stall. I won Gareth, standard. Luminic Gareth all day was like the play I was trying to go for when I would go first. If I had Foolish Barrier, I'd Foolish this. Lumina it back and, you know, try to get the old school combo going. And one Jane. Jane's great. Goes to 21. It's a beater. So for the lights one, the last card I played was Honest. Honestly, no pun intended, I uh, wanted to cut this card. I didn't think the card was that good. I felt that, you know, you're going to mill it more times you're going to use it. However, in round three when I played Water, uh, I was able to win game one because of Honest. I was able to keep my Lumina alive, and that's cr so critical in this game when you're playing Lightsworn because Lumina is the best one. And as long as you have a Lightsworn in there and you got Dragons to discard, uh, Necros to discard, useless cards to discard, you're in a good position. So Honest really uh, came through in that uh, scenario. But, um... In retrospect, I thought I would have cut it, but I think I'll keep it in here for now. It may change, though. I'd probably change it for another Light Sworn or something. Uh, that's it for the monsters. 29 monsters. Uh, under the spells. 3 Soul Charge. I didn't want to play this card at first. I wasn't playing the card. I thought that it was just like, nah, you don't need it. And that was really ignorant on my part. It's because you're not always going to mill perfectly. You're not always going to open perfectly, especially with only five cards now. You're really trying to get your mills going. And Soul Charge lets you do that. When your ability to go Lumina Gareth fails, your ability to go Lumina uh, any setup, Soul Charge lets you get back in there. It lets you get those mills going. And it also, I mean, what's really cool is you can, of course, Soul Charge on us back, add it back to hand to, you know, save yourself for another attack. But it really did come through. This card was fantastic. I think it also has the one of the coolest things about it is that you can get around really problematic monsters because you're able to soul charge, you're able to make XYZs off the monsters you bring back, and those can be the cards that can be the difference between winning and losing. Plus, you have the dragon rulers in there to make Draco Sags big eyes, you have the ability to make Felgrand 
uh, when you drop the JDs. Uh, Soul Charge is there though. Like you can have a Felgrand Soul Charge, bring back a Draco Sack, have Felgrand Draco Sack with tokens, and it's very hard for the opponent to answer that. So card was crazy. Um, I'm glad I played it. Card's insane. It shouldn't even exist, but you know, Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, the rest of the standard stuff, just three solar recharge and one charge. They're crazy, obviously. And of course, the last one was Foolish Burial. Card was card was really good. I always cited it out though, like games two and three. I just wanted it like to get Gareth in there to get the last name in there, get a ruler in there. But I didn't really want it outside of that. So I mean, it was good. I, I would not cut it. It's just a really good card in general. But it was it was an easy side out because I always felt I had better cards to side in. And then the traps are just three needle bug nests. I'm one of the few people that actually enjoys this card. I love this card. I think this card's fantastic. It's a gamble, of course. You're milling five cards. You don't know what you're going to hate. You're not getting anything off off it like Curry Bandit. But there were multiple situations where I activated two of them, milled ten cards. It's a fourth of my deck, and it really got me going. It really got me there. Um, one time it worked out really well. It won me a game. Another time I milled absolute shit. You gamble with it. So uh, you just have to, you have to know when to activate it. So really good card. Glad I played it. Um, that's it for the decks. 40 cards. Uh, like I told you guys, it's extremely standard, uh, but I wouldn't change anything in the main deck, actually. Even with the Honest, I mean, right now, I'd, uh, I'm keeping it in, but I wouldn't change anything else. I think the ratios were perfect. They worked out just fine for me. Uh, on in the side deck, really standard, 3 max C, Mirror Match, Mermail, any deck that like specials a lot. Um, it was good. Uh, 2 DD Crow to go with it. Crow was fantastic. Crow won me my round one in the mirror. Uh, he got me game one and game two. I double crowed, and that won me the game, and then game three I won, but Crow was fantastic. It was also there for Mermail to hit title, hit the Gundy target, etc. Uh, so it was, it was a good card overall. I'm glad I cited it. Uh, two Raikos. I don't main them. I don't think Raikos that strong going game one. It's a passive play. I don't really like it, but I love it. In the side deck, card was fantastic. It um, it was a mind game too because people usually think they usually know a lot of Lightstorm players actually aren't playing Raiko, so they assume that it's a Necro Gardener or an Eclipse. They don't want to attack it. They don't want to give you graveyard food. And Raiko on itself can do a lot of things. I flipped a Raiko, popped a back row, made a Scrap Dragon, used the Scrap Dragon, hit the Raiko, putting the fourth name in the graveyard for Judgment Dragon, popped their cards, brought up a JD, blew up, um, tried to blow up. Up, got uh, got hit with a breakthrough skill or something and made a, a Felgrand anyway so card was just fantastic I really glad I cited it it's also good if you play against Ophion uh, MVP for the mirror match uh, shout out to my boy 10k for hooking me up with the third one but uh, soul release won me my mirror match soul released him twice it was over cards just amazing old school card they win um, it's insane like this card just it's good for a good against uh, what is that uh, mythic rulers too But I didn't play any so it was just there for the mirror match and it, it got me there cards are great cards Another reason I wouldn't play the deck like yeah, uh, you run the gamble playing lights because you know that cards coming in I got soul released I was very fortunate that I had the setup to come back from a soul release But most times you just don't it it flat out wins the game against lights so Cards amazing. Uh, one mind control card was awesome. Sided it in uh, a lot of matches. Used it a lot. It worked out really well. Uh, made synchro plays. Made X Y Z plays. Took away problematic monsters. So I get my plays through. So really good card. Glad I sided it. I almost wanted to main deck it actually. Like if I were to cut honest, I take it back. I'd probably cut honest to play uh, mind control in the main. Uh, MVP trap. Malevolent catastrophe. It was MVP. Uh, not game. One, not round four against Peter. He MST didn't. I knew I lost. But in the, the top eight, it was critical. He had a uh, Majestic's Fiend, a D Fissure, and two back row, and he had swung into my uh, Lumina because he knew I couldn't honest with the D Fissure up. And I uh, malevolent catastrophe and blew up uh, those problematic cards, and it was it was just great. It was a blowout right there. So card was fantastic. Uh, honestly, I had side three because uh, the last two cards I sided were two Royal Decree. They sucked. I milled them, never drew them. They didn't really come through at all. But um, they were for, of course, back row heavy decks. They were for hat. But I still think Malevolent Catastrophe is better. So this would probably change to a third Malevolent Catastrophe. And then I'm not sure what I'd use that for. Side in something else, maybe. I'd see. But uh, yeah, that's my side deck. Extremely standard. Uh, now the extra deck. Uh, force the shiny Draco Sack tokens. They're cool. They're lucky, I guess. Um, played one Felgrand. Card was awesome. You're not always going to win with JD. I got Scarecrow in the mirror. Summoned another JD. Um, I had the double JDs I would have milled out. I had five cards left in deck. Uh, XYD, XYZ into Felgrand, and it got me there. So, good card. Uh, two Draco Sacks, self explanatory. Uh, you're able to make them a lot with uh, Diablos, the Dragon Rulers, Soul Charge, etc. Card's fantastic. When you have these guys on board, when your field's looking like this, like you're sitting pretty with the, with the two tokens. So, it's pretty awesome. So, glad I played two. Um, boy, Andre made me play two. Good call, good call. Uh, one big guy, made it all day. Card was fantastic. Uh, took stuff, made more XYZ plays. Uh, made some of the matches easier because I had it. So, really glad I played it. 
Uh, that was it for the sevens. For the fours, one arc, never summoned it. One Exciton, never summoned it. I was surprised. Usually I would side, uh, in the local in the locals the week before, I played these cards all day, but uh, it just didn't happen this weekend. But it was, uh, <coughs> they belonged in there, so they're good. Uh, but the ones I si summoned all day were Lavalle Chain and Diamond Direwolf. Really good cards. They do spot removal. Gets rid of, gets two Light's Horns like Gareth and Wolf into the graveyard with itself to pop a card, and you're able to use it as food for Redox. Card's fantastic. I don't know why people cut it. I mean, I understand that it's not the best card, but Kaiser Coliseum can be a bitch too, so this card's at least an out to it. If uh, the Bujan player gets sloppy and summons two monsters, it happens. Don't think it doesn't happen. People do it. And Lavalle Chain, self-explanatory, is the best XYZ rank 4-wise for the deck. Just sets up all your plays. Uh, the two rank 3s I played, I only played two. I played uh, Mech Equip Engineer, which I actually never summoned, and Levier, which I summoned a lot. Levier was fantastic. Um, I used it with Luminas, with Necrogar, Gardeners to bring Necro Gardeners back, to bring other banished light swords that got bottomless back, to make more XYZ plays card was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, and that was it for my XYZs, for my Synchros. I do play a Synchro game with this deck, uh, which I think was the difference between myself and some of the other Lightsworn players. Uh, I was very picky on what I wanted to play, uh, so I made it, kept it really simple. I played two level 8s, I played Scrap Dragon, I played Crimson Blader. Scrap I summoned a lot, it was good. Late that play, I flipped a Raikou, popped a card, milled some, milled some cards, Scrap Dragon popped the Raikou, got the fourth name in there, and it was good. Only summoned Crimson, Crimson Blader once. It was obviously for the mirror match, and it was for uh, Mermails and other decks. It just didn't come up, but it came up in my top eight against uh, Peter. I was able to Crimson Blader uh, through... Uh, one of his monsters and it, against artifacts that's really good so I was glad I played it for the one scenario where I summoned it it really came through so I was glad I, si I decided to put in the extra deck and then the sevens I played I played black rose I was black rosing all day uh, worst case scenario they finish chain a breakthrough skill uh, you bring up a ruler you make a draco sack or a big eye I did that all day it was fantastic uh, one Michael namesake uh, card was great. I only used it twice, but when I used it, it uh, it did what it needed to do to win. Um, plus, it's another name for JD. Card's great. It just I the locals before I summoned it all the time. This time it just not as much. But uh, the MVP, number one MVP of the deck, hands down, best card I summoned all day. Almost every match I played, and it got me there. It was Arcanite Magician, hands down the best. Synchro, best card in my extra deck because Lumina Raiden make that card live and it's just amazing. It can't be bottomless. It comes out at 400, gets the counters, pop two cards. They do something to it. It doesn't matter. You bring up a Dragon Ruler after that. You overlay with it. You make a Drago Sack, pop more cards. You get so far ahead with this card that it's just unreal how amazing this card is. And it's so awesome, just like in Gravekeepers back in the day, to be able to use Gale and one of the Gravekeepers to make Arcanite Magician. Uh, we're doing it again in Light's Horn. So I loved it. I'm really glad I played this card. Uh, but yeah, that's it, you guys. That's uh, my whole little spiel on the deck. Um, I don't know if I'm going to keep playing Light's Horn. It's a real gamble, but I feel that... Uh, if you know how to play the deck outside of JD Go Boom, which is possible, I think a lot of people are ignorant. They think that it's, you know, it is degenerate. I'll be the first to admit it that JD JD is extremely degenerate. But there are ways that, you know, sometimes it's just not going to happen. There are cards like number 80 Rap City that ruin that. There are cards like DD Crow. There are cards that flat out blow out this deck, like Soul Release and um, that uh, Cycle Reader, whatever it's called. So I don't think the deck is the best deck. I don't think it was the best call, but I was the only Lightsworn player in top, so I'm proud of that. And anyone that plays Lightsworn, try the build. I think it's really consistent. It performed really well. It will brick sometimes. Those are my losses when I just couldn't play Yu-Gi-Oh! I bricked. But um, I would say overall the deck was good. So let me know what you guys think. Don't hate me for playing Lightsworn. I'll definitely be playing something else. This was just I'm slowly coming back into the game, starting at locals, and then, of course, when regionals comes around, it'll be a different format. But for now, I'm just having fun playing Lightsworn again so hope you guys don't mind i uh i just was happy i'm glad i got the token and it feels good to play Yu-Gi-Oh again so yeah that's all i got to say you guys leave your comments below and thank you for watching